Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio on this rather cloudy uh, summer day in the UK. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this image. This image was achieved with a technique using high-speed sync and multiple exposure. This gives the opportunity to build up a finished picture from a series of individual images. With a little post-production in Photoshop it's possible to turn the mundane into a surreal, arty result. OK, so how was it done? Well, actually, the weather being overcast uh, and a bit cloudy uh, helps quite a lot with this type of technique. What I'm going to do is uh, overpower the, uh, the daylight to a certain degree, not completely, um, with flash. And in order to do that, I'm going to use high-speed sync. Now this is where you can uh, synchronize the uh, flash with uh, speeds, shutter speeds, well over the sync speed uh, for your camera. Uh, and this is usually done through the flash control. Uh, now these vary uh, considerably from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer, but most will uh, achieve a uh, synchronization uh, up to uh, four thousandth, maybe even an eight thousandth of a second. And at those sort of shutter speeds, it's possible to cut out the majority of daylight. Having said that, of course, uh, the sun has just broken through the clouds, so we'll see how we go. All right, so to start with then, what I'm going to need is a tripod. In order to do multiple exposure like this, you're going to need to keep the camera very still. OK, so here we are. I'm using this Manfrotto uh, 475B um, in conjunction with a 410 geared head. Uh, this gives you the opportunity of having a very rigid base um, to support your camera and also uh, gives fine control over the position of the camera itself. And also you have a uh, wind-up centre column on here, uh, which I always find very useful. Right, so the next thing would be a camera. Now I'm using this uh, DSLR in conjunction with a 24 to 70 2.8 zoom lens. Uh, I want something relatively wide because I'm going to actually show you where I'm placing all the lights. Uh, but you might want to use something maybe uh, a little longer, uh, just so that you can get some separation between uh, your camera position and the subject. OK, so the camera goes on the top of the tripod like that. And the next uh, part that I'm going to need is a flash sync trigger. Now I'm using this uh, Profoto uh, flash sync trigger, uh, which has the uh, capability of uh, doing high speed sync. So I'll just pop that on the top of the camera. I'll leave it turned off for the time being. OK, so with all that on, I'll just frame up the shot. So first of all, I'll just focus that. And possibly just make that a little wider. So that's at the 24 millimeter end. And I'm just going to wind the center column up uh, a little bit. There we are. So with all that done, uh, next thing to do is just put the camera into manual mode and just use the meter in the camera uh, to set the exposure. So I'll just do that. OK, so the meter is telling me that uh, I need 125th of a second at f8. So with those bits dialed in, I'll just take an image and see what it looks like. OK, so you can see from that you've got a reasonable exposed image uh, of a tree in a field. But it's nothing uh, too special. So in order to uh, start making it a bit special, I need to cut out the daylight. So what I'm going to do is re-expose it with a much, much higher shutter speed and possibly uh, lower the aperture a bit as well. So again, just looking through the viewfinder and using the meter in the camera, 
First thing I'm going to do is just increase the shutter speed. Oops, wrong way, off we go. So as I do that, you should be able to see that the image is getting darker and darker. There we go. And I'm also going to uh, just open up the aperture a little, which will make the flash a bit more uh, responsive. So I'm going to take it from F8 to F4, I think, something like that. And just wind the uh, shutter speed until most of the daylight has gone. Somewhere around there, I think. OK, so with that all now set, uh, what I'll do is just grab an image and we'll see what it looks like. There, and you should be able to see from that that a lot of the daylight has now been cut out. So the next stage would be to add uh, a spot of flash to now illuminate the subject. So for the flash, I'm using this Profoto uh, B1X. This is a 500 joule uh, flash unit which has a uh, high speed sync. Uh, now, again, being um, the English summer, uh, it is actually quite windy out here. So I'm using uh, quite a heavy duty stand on purpose, uh, which I'll also have a sandbag on the bottom uh, when I've put it in position, uh, just to stop the whole thing blowing over. Uh, but it's uh, just as easy to do this uh, with an assistant, if you've got one, who can just handhold the uh, flash, or um, just use a uh, portable stand, but don't forget to put something on the bottom of it, just to weight it down a bit. OK, so to position this then, what I'm going to do, just pop this near to the tree. It doesn't actually matter if this is actually in your shot. Uh, as you'll see a bit later when we come to do the uh, post-production. Right, so without changing anything else apart from turning the flash sync on, making sure it's in high speed sync, we'll just grab an image and see what we get. OK, so you can see from that image that the flash has fired and it's illuminated part of one side of the tree. But the effect isn't very pronounced. So to make it a bit more efficient, what I'm going to do is add this reflector to the flash and also just move it a little closer. You don't actually need to move it very much closer to make quite a large difference. OK, so we'll just fire that again. And there you go, that's made a, a bit of a difference to it. That's probably about the right sort of exposure that I'm looking for. So now what I need to do is just move the flash around the tree uh, and take a series of uh, images. Not forgetting, of course, uh, a sandbag to make everything stable. I'll just pop that on there. OK, so I'm just going to move this up a little. Just move the boom arm like this. Yeah. and grab another image. So as you move the flash around uh, the subject, uh, you're building up literally a picture uh, of the tree, uh, one flash at a time. Uh, so there's one or two more that I want to take, uh, probably filling in a bit at the front, at the uh, uh, lower down here, and I'm going to place the flash directly behind the tree uh, for a couple of exposures as well. Okay, so with all those uh, images now captured, it's probably time just to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop uh, and I've already imported uh, all of the uh, files with the flash in the various places around the tree, like this, etc. So the first thing I want to do is just make a stack of all these images. And I find the easiest way to do that is just to go to File, come down to Scripts, go to load files into stack. Just ask it to add the open files 
and also click the little box where it says attempt to automatically align source images. That will make it easier for you as uh, we progress with the edit. Click on OK and just let Photoshop do its thing. There, so once it's finished uh, aligning everything, you'll end up with uh, a set of layers over here with each image on a separate layer. Now as it is at the moment, you can only see the top one. If I just um, click on the little eye icon, that will change to the one underneath it, and so on, all the way down. So you're only seeing one image at a time. And what we want to do is be able to see all of the images at once. So if I just put all the little visibility icons back on, uh, and now just click on the uh, one, one up from the bottom, and holding down the shift key, click the one at the top, that will select all the layers in between. I'm going to change the blend mode between all of those layers from normal to lighten. So that will then let me see through each layer and just bring out the lighter parts in each image. As you can see, you can see all of the, uh, the separate flash positions now. OK, so with that bit done, the next thing to do will be just to um, have a look at each image. So what I'm going to do is just deselect all of the ones between the very last one and the very first one. Therefore, this is the first one, and this is the part of the tree that it's illuminating, and obviously this is the very last one. OK, so with the visibility turned on for the first one, uh, what I'm going to do is just add a layer mask to that, like so. Uh, now, with that layer mask active, if I just come over here and just make sure that the foreground colour is black, the easiest way to do that is just to click on the defaults and then reverse them so that you end up with a black foreground colour. So I'll be painting onto the mask with black, which will then hide the parts of that image that I don't want to see. So I'll pick a brush, reasonable size, and you can see where the uh, flash head is here. So if I just go over that, go over the stand as well, that gets rid of that. Uh, and then I just do the same thing for all the other images. So I'll grab this one, select the layer, add a layer mask, and again just paint over where the flash is, like so. So you just carry on all the way down doing exactly the same thing on each layer. Now just for the ones in the middle, I'm just going to take the actual light out itself. So finally, just add a last one for there and just click on where the light is. There, so with that done, what you've ended up with uh, is just all the light parts of the image, uh, which is what I wanted, uh, without seeing any of the flashes. So with that part of the edit completed, what I'm going to do is just deselect all the layers so that there's nothing selected. And I'm just going to make a stamp layer of all of them. And the way to do that is to hold down the Shift key, the Control key, the Alt key and press the E key and that will produce this new layer which is a function of all the layers that are underneath it. So with this one uh, selected I'm going to go to the Adjustments tab up here and I'm just going to click on the uh, Levels. I'm just going to make a Levels adjustment um, but just for that layer. So this little tab down the bottom here uh, will just affect the layer which is immediately underneath it and nothing else. So I'll just click on that. 
And now I'm just going to lighten that up a bit. Don't want to go too far. Somewhere around there is quite good, I think. Right, now this also comes with a uh, layer mask, as all of the adjustment tools do. So what I'm going to do is just invert that mask. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, double click it, like so, and just click on Invert. And just click on OK. Right, so that's now made me a black mask. So in order to reveal that, I need to paint white onto that. So just swap the foreground and background colors. Make myself a much bigger brush, something like that. And just click on that, just to bring that layer through, like so. So with that bit done, the next thing to do would be to look at a crop. So I'll just click on the Crop tool. And I'm going to pick uh, the usual ratio of 16 by 9. And just pull the edges in a bit, just to recompose the image. I don't want to go too far. OK, I might just move that around a little, something like that. OK, so just click on the OK at the top here. There. Now that's come out um, pretty good. I think I'd just like to darken down a little bit uh, around the edges. Uh, so I'm just going to add another layer. Uh, and then just with uh, black selected again, I'm literally just going to paint the edges in um, with a very large uh, black brush. Uh, but I'm not going to have 100% opacity. I'm just going to take that down to about 70, 76 ish. There you go, that should help. So I'll just click on the edges just to bring those in a bit, just like that. And then maybe a bit at the top. There we are. Just to emphasize what we've done. So there we have it. That just shows what you can do uh, with the application of uh, high speed sync uh, with flash outdoors and using different blend modes in Photoshop uh, to combine multiple exposures. Uh, and I think that's turned out quite well. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that uh, picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.